Hi everyone. When you are getting started with mixed media stitch is what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to specifically tell you about working with fabric today and in a quilting manner the way that I do. And then I will create another video that talks about using paper if you're interested in stitching on paper because that's a little bit different, um, different steps, different things to consider before you get started. So today we'll just talk about fabric. Okay, so here you've got a finished version of an example of how I do mixed media stitch. Um, in this case, we have a photo transferred image that was done using um, artist transfer paper and I will link that in the description box below so you can look that up but basically you're able to make marks on the paper iron it onto the fabric and then after that I did stitching on top so those are two different media that I used um, in this one this one here is a little bit simpler and this was actually created using fabric that I designed myself um, using spoon flower so I will also link spoon flower down below that is a print-on-demand fabric company where you can upload a photo create you know whatever design you're interested in and then they will print on demand onto fabric in this case it was printed onto 100% Kona cotton and um, this is an image of a crow um, a dead crow that I found and I, multi I repeated the design and so all the texture and the imagery in the background was already on the fabric when I started. I then embroidered these labyrinths onto it and then hand quilted it um, to create this design. When you're getting started with mixed media uh, stitch and in this case a mixed media quilt, you're going to need a few supplies. So I have laid them out here for you. You will need some paint brushes to apply the paint. You will need some embroidery floss, and this can usually be got at any craft store. Um, you can also use regular thread, so it depends on what weight and what texture you'd like your thread to have. I like uh, very thick uh, thread, and I also will, you know, separate these strands into, you know, sometimes I do two, sometimes I do three, um, and then sometimes I do the full width of these strands when I'm stitching. You're also going to need some paint. So in this case I use a couple different types of paint depending on the effect that I'm going for. Various acrylics, um, whatever you happen to have, these are paint, you know, painting professional acrylics. Um, and um, this will give your fabric more stiffness. So if you are interested in keeping your fabric soft, then I would recommend using fabric paint. So there's different brands for that, um, depending on uh, what you have available in your area. And what the fabric paint does is it goes into the fabric and it absorbs into it and it keeps it pliable. Whereas the acrylic paint will give it much more stiffness and obviously because acrylic paint is is plastic it essentially makes the surface that you're going to be stitching through much stiffer and in some places kind of um, hard uh, depending on how thickly you apply the paint. In the case of mixed media quilts you're going to need three layers to create a quilt. Now um, you know that's that's kind of up for debate in some in some instances but um, for me when I'm creating quilts I do use the traditional three layers so you're going to need your top layer which is usually something you will use cotton um, or you could use linen you can really use any fabric but just know that if you're using things like t-shirt cotton or jersey or different fabrics like that you're going to have a harder time with your stitching. Your stitching could potentially buckle, um, it could potentially create wrinkles in the fabric. So, you know, the stiffer the fabric um, the and the tighter the weave of the fabric, the easier it's going to be for you to keep a nice flat surface when you're stitching. Your middle layer is batting. 
Um, and there's many different kinds of batting. You can get this, which is kind of the traditional polyester-based batting. You can get it made of bamboo. You can get it 100% um, cotton. Uh, you can use newspaper, which they used to use a long time ago. You can use uh, felt or um, any kind of um, you know blanket fabric that you happen to have. Um, because you, what you're essentially trying to do is create some depth when you're putting the stitching in, and the puffier the center, the more of a puff is going to happen when you stitch. And so it's really to you up to what kind of level of stitch and puffiness you want the stitching to produce in what you're making, and then you're going to need a background layer. So I use, I usually pick a contrasting fabric, something that um, is not exactly the same as the front, but is the same color scheme but you can always choose to use the same fabric it, it really doesn't make much difference this is going to be the back of your quilt okay so the first step um, in this process is to decide on your imagery what do you want to have on the surface um, do you want to just paint an image on here do you want to draw do you want to use photo transfer as I've done here with the artist transfer paper? And you know, that is really going to determine um, your layers. And so when you're using mixed media in any way, you're going to always be thinking about layers. So if in this instance, I decided my first layer was going to be these two crows um, used with the artist transfer paper. And my second layer is going to be some paint. Okay, in this piece here, what I decided to do after I put on my first layer, which was this, this labyrinth here and this kind of gray wing shape, was I wanted to put some stitching on first and then I wanted to paint it. And usually I would paint before I do the main stitching, but um, in this case I wanted to just see how I could layer the paint over top of the stitch or emphasize the paint in a different way depending on the shape. And um, again, this is really something you can play with. I don't think there's any set rules on what order you have to do things in. Um, in terms of embroidery though, I will say that I do recommend doing embroidery first um, because embroidery such as this, this is just a chain stitch that, that I did this embroidery with. Um, embroidery is harder to do once you have quilted. So um, because it's a very dense way of stitching, uh, it's much easier to do any embroidery stitches when the fabric is uh, in one layer as opposed to trying to do embroidery through two layers, uh, sorry, three layers. Um, and so you may also want to use an embroidery hoop if you're going to be doing embroidery. That will help you to keep um, the fabric very straight and um, so it doesn't get puckers in it while you're doing embroidery. There's lots of different embroidery stitch books or um, sites online that you can look up that'll tell you different stitches. Um, the other thing to keep in mind when you're doing embroidery is that it's fairly delicate so if you're going to use it you want to make sure that you're not going to be putting too many layers on top of it because what can happen is you can maybe destroy the stitching um, when you're putting on paint or rubbing it with a paintbrush or something like that. So you just have to be a little bit more careful about the level of, of um, agitation that you're going to give to embroidery. Unless you want to completely obscure it, in which case, you know, you can do it afterwards, but you will have it showing through as well. So here you can see all my quilting stitches, but you can't see the back of the embroidery because it's in, uh, the, it's in between all three layers. Okay, so now that I've kind of gone over what you're going to need to gather in order to do this, um, I am just going to make a couple quick decisions on what I'm going to be painting today. My plan is to paint on all of these pieces. I want paint on every single one. You can see here that some of these have absolutely nothing on them, and so I'm going to be adding the um, interest onto these with paint. 
and um, I probably won't walk you through all of these different processes um, as I do each one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through one and the rest of them you can just look at in a time lapse and kind of see the variation that you can get and um, then I will check in again with you at the end. As I explained before, I was going to paint the side black because I like the idea of it looking kind of like a wing. So in these pieces that I'm doing, I'm contrasting crows and labyrinths, or I'm not necessarily contrasting them, I'm combining them um, using elements from both those symbols um, uh, to create the compositions for the pieces. So I already had my labyrinth done here and I wanted to kind of represent this idea of a black wing coming up on this side and then I put in some white paint just to kind of add again more layers so you see here you've got layers of stitch layers of photo transfer and layers of paint and they're creating really nice textures together and then I also just wanted to balance these two sides of white with this little moon so I added that little moon in and at this point I'm gonna let this dry and then it will be ready for the stitching portion. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically it. The, the painting part can be one layer. In some instances for my bigger pieces, I will go and do some stitching and then I will come back and do some more painting. It really depends on how many layers you need, the desired effect you're going for, and um, it, there is a, a level of spontaneity in it, um, but what happens is you kind of start building up the layers and you, you feel, um, it's, it's kind of a feeling, it's an instinct when things have enough of one element or not. Um, so for this one, um, I will go at this point right to um, quilting. So I've already done a little bit of machine quilting and the rest of this I'm gonna do by hand and I will be quilting on on this um, and building up the rest of the layers that way and then this piece will be finished. Okay, so I thought I would talk you through the whole process on this one. Um, and again, these pieces for me are very spontaneous and I don't necessarily use this process for all of my work. Usually my work is much more planned out. There's more of a plan at the beginning than there is for these. But I think when I'm trying to share the process with you, a more spontaneous example is probably a lot easier for um, you to try out. So, you know, approaching this, this with a sense of play and not feeling too precious about it if it doesn't work out is probably the best for, especially if you're a beginner. And I would also say that the beauty of mixed media is that if you make a mistake, you can turn it into something else. So for instance, you know, I'm going to draw a labyrinth or I'm going to paint a labyrinth here. Um, and this is uh, the method for painting labyrinths that I learned in um, a specific book called The Spirituality of labyrinths and mazes I believe was the name of the book but I will link it down below um, it is a book that I feature in my very first labyrinth journal video so if you're interested in learning more about the book you can check out that video um, and so I'm just gonna paint you know do this without drawing lines in the beginning I'm gonna let the lines not be perfect I'm not really interested in perfect lines um, and I'm going to enjoy the process of painting the labyrinth because painting labyrinths is a really meditative activity you can definitely use it uh, through drawing or painting as a meditation 
and um, they just kind of materialize over the course. So as I have two object, like two birds on either side of the composition, I want something that balances out the center. And so I'm going to obviously have that be the labyrinth here. That's not going to mean that the composition is going to be totally even, as you'll see when I'm finishing this. But uh, again, I'm not really interested in perfection. I'm not really looking for um, something that has, you know, impeccable lines. This is more about. creating um, a feeling, creating um, a representation of something, but it doesn't have to be a realistic representation. My work isn't really about realism, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to worry about whether or not the labyrinth is perfectly even. I'm just going to paint on this fabric. This fabric is actually really interesting because there's something to do with the dye that makes some of the circles um, absorb the paint and stick out beyond the paint, which I find really fun and interesting in playing with this fabric. Um, this fabric is the main fabric of several pieces that I'm working on in this series going for a exhibit that will be starting at the end of September of this year, 2021. So in case you're new to the channel, um, my name is Jenny Johnston. I am a visual artist and I work in textile based medium. I call my um, my work mixed media quilts and um, I have been working on my um, work my, my career uh, professionally for about 10 years but I would say the last five years or so have had more momentum and I also work part-time as a program manager at a museum Heritage Society and so I have two I would say I have two professions um, I'm deciding to put some white onto the crow here again I just want to have some layers of texture um, and I will be putting some black on as well so this is just giving it a little bit of more definition but I don't want to cover up all of this texture I really like this um, artist transfer paper texture this artist transfer paper is actually a little bit old these are scrap pieces that I was using so that might that means that the text the the image that I'm um, transferring doesn't necessarily transfer super evenly but again I kind of like that so I did an extensive body of work about crows um, for about two years and I had this opportunity uh, along with an artist residency to have a show this fall an exhibition of my work uh, a solo exhibition and the space has a very bright orange wall and when I was discussing with a colleague of mine, uh, she suggested black and white work would look best on this wall. And there's also glass cases that I need to fill up. And so that's kind of why I'm doing smaller pieces as well, because we need lots of multiple smaller pieces. And so these are going to be um, the pieces that go in the glass case. And they'll probably be propped up on little stands or little mini easels. I haven't figured that out yet. Okay, so this is what I have so far. I'm wondering what else I should add. Um, 
because at this point it could go either way. I could leave it and do the rest with, with stitch or I could add a bit more paint and I think I am going to add a bit more paint. I think I'm going to go for some shapes um, just to kind of play around a little bit with some organic style shapes that I can quilt around or quilt inside. And this just plays in again to the kind of organic nature of this. I'm not looking for any particular outcome necessarily with these pieces. They're small, they are meant to be intuitive and kind of playful in their nature. So, um, you know, that's the same way I'll be approaching them as I'm quilting them. I'm not going to be you know, thinking about anything too um, radical in these pieces. They're just, they are uh, all meant to be kind of different, all representing crows and labyrinths in some way, but I'm not going to be like pre-planning them out too heavily. So you can see that the paint does different things depending on the brush you're using. So when I'm using this kind of thinner brush it's you know making these very drawing painterly like lines and um, on the next pieces I'll probably be doing something that's more um, more thick I'm keeping the paint fairly thin on this one not adding any thick paint anywhere so it's going to be pretty easy to stitch along but I am going to add some more thick paint on the next ones. Okay, so there you have it. I filled this one up. I put a lot of stuff in here and um, that's just because I, you know, I wanted that level of fullness and then when I add the stitch in you're going to see the difference in it developing and changing. Um, with the different layers and textures coming together. for today. I now have five small pieces that are ready to get ready for stitch. Some of these have to be layered into quilt, uh, little quilt um, sandwiches like, like this one and at that point I will start stitching on them. So I'm going to leave it here because this video is already getting quite long and what I'm going to do is split it into two. So this is part one you're learning about the materials you need to gather and the um, painting or first layers of things. Um, if you are interested in me going over photo transfer with you, um, there's a lot of different methods of photo transfer which you can look up um, on YouTube, I'm sure. Um, I will put a few examples of photo transfer methods in the description box down below if you'd like to learn more about photo transfer. But if you would like me to just show you the way I do it, please leave a comment and let me know and I can make another video that speaks specifically to photo transfer. Otherwise, the next video in this series will be the stitching phase. Um, so I will show you how to make the sandwich um, with the batting and the back and um, I'll probably take you through the process of stitching one of these pieces. And um, after that, I will show you how to finish off the edges and you will have the completed little mixed media piece uh, that you are looking for. 
So I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. I want to thank you for um, showing interest in my work. And please leave any questions you have about this process down below. I'm happy to answer them. And I will be back again soon with another video.